Hey folks, this is Bad Brad Berkwood, the host of the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Forget about it. And this is another RSR video email bag. Forget about it. And as we always do before we get into your questions, make sure you subscribe to the Ringside Report YouTube channel, RSR for short, so you can keep up with all these video email bags. And the Bad Brad Berkwood Show coming soon. Yes, I keep saying it, but it's coming. Wait for it, wait for it. It's coming soon. You're going to see new people and old people and all kinds of people, like Barbara Streisand saying so long ago, people who need people. I'm not going to try to sing. Forget about it. But they're going to be on the interview couch, okay? So with that said and without further ado, forget about it. Let's get right to your questions. First question is, Bad Brad, enjoy the email video bags very much. Keep the truth coming, brother. We need more of it in boxing. I have been a fan of Larry Holmes since before he won the title from Kenny Norton in 1978. I think he is in the top five heavyweight champions of all time and gets so tired of him being underrated. What are your thoughts about him as far as his place in boxing history? Also, what do you think was his greatest performance in the ring? Thanks for answering my questions. Bobby D., from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, Bobby D, forget about it. That's a great question. Larry Holmes, I agree with you, pal. Very underrated. One of the best who ever did it. Had one of the best, if not the best jab in the history of boxing. He'd out jab you all night. Forget about it. He is underrated. Where do I rank him? I'd say I'd put him in my, my top 10. Probably in the top five, but I'd have to really look at my top 10 list, because off the top of my head, I really never put together a top 10 list. But the names that are floating around in my head, he's definitely in the top 10, maybe even in the top five. Okay, so that's the answer to your first part of your first question. Your second question was, what do I think was his greatest performance? Well, I'm going to answer it like this, pal. Forget about it. I'm going to say Jerry Cooney. And the reason why I'm going to say Jerry Cooney is because of the significance of the fight. I hate that they made it. I understand why they did it from a business perspective, but I hate how they made it a race thing. Black against white, the great white hope. I've interviewed both of them, and neither one of them really liked that. They might have understood it from a business sense because it made a lot of fazools. A lot of fazools. Forget about it. Keep in mind, that was June of 1982, 33 years ago. Where did it go, pal? But I never liked that storyline. I, I, I didn't, but it is what it is, and it's part of history. Because it was such a big fight and because, you know, a lot of people wanted Jerry Cooney to win the title and Larry Holmes overcame getting punched in the family jewels, which is probably one of the toughest punches that Jerry Cooney landed on Larry Holmes. Forget about it. He overcame and he wound up stopping him in the 13th round. Forget about it. I'm going to say that's the biggest one. But I'm going to say 1B and 1C, even though you asked for one, because I feel they're so relevant to your answer. So I'm going to give you these other two, okay? Second, 1978 against Kenny Norton when he won the title because he had, I believe it was a shoulder problem going into that fight. And I honestly, I thought it was very close. It could have went either way, but it was a split for Larry. I could have seen Kenny keeping the title, though. I'm not going to lie. And I really think that Kenny might have pulled it out. But it was a close fight. Needless to say, I think if Larry went in with no injury, it would have been a much easier fight. But hey, he persevered. And he didn't make excuses, forget about it, and he did what all champions do. He won the title, and he overcame adversity. So that's an important one. But another one that people may not want to give him credit for was much later into his career, almost 20 years into his career, pal. And that was when he beat Ray Mercer. He beat him from pillar to post. And he even talked to the commentators when he did it, which wind up getting him a title shot against Evander Holyfield. He beat Ray in 92, and he wasn't supposed to do that. Forget about it. So that was an important uh, career win for Larry Holmes as well. People forget about that one. So those are my three. Against Jerry Cooney, against Kenny Norton, and against Merciless Ray Mercer. There's your three, Bobby D. from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Forget about it. You guys got some great food. Forget about it. Okay. Next question. Bad Brad. Simply put. You have the best damn writing team of any boxing website on the net today. You bums. Just kidding. Call it like you see it and cover every aspect of the game. I was surprised 
You even cover wrestling and football. Love my WWE, brother. Prayers out to Jimmy Superfly Snooker, who has cancer. I have a few questions which I hope make your show. First of all, thank you for the props, pal, and I'm going to get into your questions here. Number one, how good was Vinny Paz, and does he get more credit because he came back from a broken neck? I have been a fan of his for years and met him once years back. He signed an autograph and kissed my mom's hand, telling her she was beautiful, which had my dad in stitches. Okay. First of all, let me answer that question because you got three on there, pal. I'm going to answer all of them. But your first one. First of all, Vinny Paz is one of my paisans. He's a great guy. He's crazy as a bed bug, but in a good way. He's got a heart of gold, I can tell you that. And many people come up to me or have emailed me or contacted me after we've done shows and different things, how much they respect them. I'm going to tell you this. No, I don't think he's overrated because he came back from a broke neck, which is amazing in itself. My paisan had a halo. The screws in his head were a thing. It came back. That was a miracle only from the man up above. Forget about it. I think Vinny was a great fighter. He beat Greg Hogan for the lightweight title. And he built, he beat, I'll get it out, Gilbert DeLay for the WBA junior middleweight title in 1991. And sadly, he had the car accident, so he was never able to defend it. Okay? I don't think he was overrated. I think he's a great champion. And he had balls of steel get cut up and he'd keep going. I've seen him get defeated against Aaron Superman Davis bleeding. I mean bleeding. You'd think he need a transfusion. He was bleeding so much and he didn't want to quit. No, Vinny's not overrated in my book, okay? But not only was he a great champion and a hell of a fighter, he's a hell of a human being. And I mean that from the heart and I don't say nothing I don't mean. So there's your first answer. Second question. How is Bobby Chacon doing today? I love his wars with Bazooka Lamone, Bose Edwards, and so many others. Okay? And let me just say, because there's three questions here. This is from Nino P. from Siganella, Sicily. Forget about it. I was stationed there in the 90s. I love the pizza, man. It was the best I ever had, Nino P. Now, you ask about Bobby Chacon. Sadly, he's still alive. That's not sad. But sadly, he suffers from pugilistic dementia. Another one, the reason why you constantly hear me fighting for a retirement fund, mandatory retirement fund. Forget about it for all boxers. But he's still beloved. He still cuts up. You see him in the media from time to time. I don't know where he's at right now. I'd love to know more about him. So anybody out there that has any intel, recent intel on Bobby Chacon, reach out to me. Let me know. I'd love to do an update to this question. Okay? But last I heard he was doing okay. Still beloved. And that's all I know. Now, your last question. Was Freddie Roach any good as a fighter? I know he lost to Hector Camacho back in the 1980s. Thanks for taking the time to answer my questions. Again, that was Nino P. Siganello Sicily. Nino, Freddie Roach was a tough guy, but I'm going to say he was a C- minus at best. Club fighter, never a world world beater. Okay? But a, a guy that had, he had gonads, man. He was tough, but not a world beater by any means. Exciting. Guy that fought on ESPN. Always gave the best that he could in the ring. Okay, he's a better trainer than he was a fighter. I'll say that. But you're right. Hector Camacho did beat him on ESPN. All right? So that answers all your questions. Last question. Bad Brad. I'm laughing already because I see the line, folks, and you don't see it, but I'm going to read it. Bad Brad. Roses are red. Violets are blue. If I ever get a hold of you, Mr. Forget It Man, I'm going to plant a big kiss on you. Oh, I hope this is a woman. Forget about it. Yes, Mr. Forget About It Man, I'm a poet, and you didn't know it. But on a serious note, I love boxing since I was five years old and watched it with my dad. I loved a fighter named Ro uh, Mike Rossman, being that I'm a Jewish girl from the Bronx. Oh, I'm so glad you were a girl. Forget about it. What did you think of him as a fighter? Hugs and kisses, your biggest fan, Janet F. Janice F., I should say, not Janet. Janice F. from Bronx. New York. Oh, Janice F. Janice F. Janice F. A poet, and she knows it. Whatever. Mike Rossman. You Meshuggan, I'm going to tell you. Forget about it. Oy vey. Okay. Mike Rossman. Another tough guy. He beat Victor Galendez for the WBA light heavyweight title. I think it was 1978, I think was the year. 77 or 78. Wind up losing it in a rematch with Victor Glennis. I think he defended it once or twice. At least once, I'm pretty sure he defended it. It might have been overseas. He was a tough guy. He was a tough guy. I think he was actually half a, uh, 
uh, Italian, half Jewish, I think. But I know he was—he at least had Jewish blood in him, and it might have been his mother. I can't remember. Very tough guy. Uh, went on to have a couple more fights. I think his last fight might have been against Dwight Braxton. He got stopped. Not 100% on that. I do know he got stopped, though, against Braxton. He's one of those guys that never liked the limelight, never liked the media. And last I heard, he was in Atlantic City or something like that. I don't know if he was doing construction or he owned a construction company. But every once in a while, you'll see him pop up at an event. But, yeah, I agree. Tough guy in that era when you had... So many great light heavyweight champions. Forget about champions and challengers, I should say. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, Michael Spinks, Lottie McWhale, Yaki Lopez, uh, Murray Sutherland, Matthew Saad Muhammad, Dwight Braxton. The list goes on and on and on and on. Forget about it. All right, folks. That's another RSR video email bag in the can, as we always say. So send your questions in to Ringside Report 2014 at gmail.com. That's ringside report 2014 at gmail.com. And as Frank Sinatra sang so eloquently so long ago, the best is yet to come. Bad Brad out.